Now, one of the things that happens when you get to be known as a air gun guy in your community is that uh, word gets around and uh, so this is kind of the culmination of one of those events where a fellow that I know ran into or knew another guy and he knew an old fella who had some pellet guns that he wanted to get rid of and didn't know what to do with them. So, uh, and this old guy is, uh, he's not going to go on Craigslist. Matter of fact, he doesn't have a cell phone even. So uh, he's, he's technologically challenged. Anyway, they ended up calling me uh, by word of mouth and I went and took a look and I picked up these four rifles here and then we got a box of uh, stuff, you know, magazines, pellets, powerlets, uh, a bunch of pistols. And so we'll go through all this stuff. I'll show you what, what this uh, ended up being. And, uh, you know, I paid $200 for the whole package here, which um, I'm not sure is a deal or not, but we're going to take a look at each one of these. This this one here we're not going to talk about. This is a, a Daisy 840, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's coming apart here. Uh, the clamshell's separated, and so I'm not sure if that's just a matter of tightening the screws up or, or what's going on there. And maybe some people are really into these uh, old Daisy pumpers, but um, I'm not. So I'm going to set that aside for now. We've got two of the Benjamin 342s and one Sheridan uh, Blue Streak. Okay, our first uh, specimen here is a 342. And this is, uh, you know, I dated this from, I think, 1970. It's got the checkered stock, which is kind of nice uh, to have that. It uh, cocks, shoots, safety works, all that, but it doesn't pump. You know, there's nothing nothing going on there, and I don't believe there's a link spring in here that would hold the hold the lever closed. So we got some issues there, and but I think it might be a good candidate if somebody wanted to refinish the stock, and uh, and it would probably look pretty good. Now this uh, the old hardwood seal is pretty much gone, so I think that would just come off and uh, be the end of it. And we're going to zoom in here and take a quick look at a couple of things in here that I thought were, were interesting. Okay, well one of the things pretty obviously jumps out at you is that it's got a crack in the stock here. So that'll need to be repaired uh, before we go any further with having to reseal it or anything like that. And so that's what we got ahead of us on this one. We got to reseal it. Uh, I think work the wood over fix the crack here and then I think we got a pretty nice little shooter. I always like the 342s because they're fairly light, fairly short and uh, reasonably accurate. So that's our plan for this one here. Well here's our other 342 and it's kind of an interesting gun in a couple of ways but the main thing is uh, there's no cracks in the stock that I found which is nice but the stock is really kind of ugly. You can see it's discolored here um, still has the original uh, American Hard or American Walnut sticker here, which I'd like to save. So if you have any suggestions on how to get that off and and then put it back on when the uh, stock gets refinished, I'd appreciate that. Um, the interesting thing about this one, I think, is that the metal is almost mint. I mean, there's almost no marks on it at all. So we're not going to have to do anything to the uh, parts that are blacked here. Uh, but the stock could re be refinished. And this one actually pumps. And I haven't tested it to see if it holds air, but it, it does caulk and fire and the safety works and everything. So this one's not in bad shape. And um, I think really uh, just working the stock over will make a big difference for this one but it's a pretty nice gun. Well, this is the contents of the box, and it's a bunch of stuff. Of course, we got some pistols here. We got the 357s, and then a whole bunch of these magazines. Uh, I believe these are for the 357 six shooter, and these, uh, I don't know, I, they look the same, just to have more holes in them. So, uh, <laughs> if you have a have a clue about this, why well, let me know what's going on with the difference in the two types of magazines. Um, Pellgun oil, 
some empty pellet holders, some pellets of some kind, wad cutters, some uh, pellets, more pellets, more pellets, BBs. There's a bunch of these uh, CO2 powerlets. Um, what is this, 40 or 25 count, uh, half, half box here and three boxes of five. Um, so we got those model 357 uh, manual. A Beeman uh, basic air gun cleaning kit and this was purchased at uh, Sims Hardware in Sacramento for $19.95. That's what it says. Maybe it was on sale. I don't know, but it comes with all the stuff that uh, Beeman was pushing out at the time. And what, uh, then we got the pistols. I mentioned the 357s, two of them. Uh, we got this Crossman, what is this? Uh, Powermatic BB. Um, I don't know what model this is. Oh, model, what does that say, 1600? I think it says 1600. But this is a CO2 pistol, and I don't know if it works or not, but we'll check this out. It takes, uh, you know, BBs in here when it's working anyway. So these are kind of fun, actually. They're not real top quality, but they're fun. And this one, you know, the old ones are kind of hefty. They got some... Uh, some weight to them, feel like a real weapon. Then we got these two uh, pump ups. This is uh, the uh, 22 caliber, 1322. Yeah, I guess that pumps up. And then this one is the 1377, the American Classic. I'll be darned, it pumps too. Both of these have the plastic breeches on them, and these are kind of cool guns, and they're, they're adaptable, so you can replace the uh, plastic breech with a steel breech. A lot of sources, I think Mac One Air Gun Shop sells one, and probably Baker Air Guns, probably a lot of places sell them. And then you can get a shoulder stock, and then these become a little uh, carbine pumper type of uh, of a pellet gun. So that's the box and we got one more item to show here. Well here's kind of the prize of the bunch. Um, I think these are probably more desirable even than the uh, Benjamin 342's and this is a blue streak and it's dated from 1970 and I know that because it's got the date stamped right here uh, next to the pellet shuttle or pellet chute. And it, of course they're backwards and it also has an L. And I think L would probably mean December. So probably December of 1970 for this. Um, you can see the stock is pretty ugly, uh, but it's intact. There's no uh, cracks or anything like that. So it's okay. This one, of course, this doesn't pump. We're gonna have to deal with that. And um, one thing about these old ones, if you are going to refinish the stock, they have these rivets here in the uh, hold the trigger guard on, and you take those off uh, in order to do the stock, and you're never going to get this back using those same rivets as tight as it was. So I'm probably going to go ahead and, and pull the rivets off and then use uh, screws, wood screws, to you know, put it back. But if you know a better solution for that, why leave it in the comments because I haven't found one yet that uh, works uh, with either these original rivets or with some kind of replacement rivets. Um, and what they do is you you take them out and you know you there's a it's almost like a cotter pin where they're spread and you can you can pinch them closed and pull them out but you're never able to get them back in there and spread them in the same place and get that get this tight. So at least my experience is this is always a little bit loose, which is annoying. Uh, this one has a, one of the Sheridan mounts on it for a scope. 
and it's got the Bushnell scope chief here, a three to eight power scope. And these were, you know, at the time, uh, pretty desirable. And the way he's got it mounted here still allows you to pump with your hand here. You know, the normal tendency is to pump with your hand maybe a little bit further back, but uh, you put a scope on it, you can't pump here, and you don't want to push on the scope. So this is a, a good solution is to mount it and then cantilever this thing back. Um, so I was really happy to get this. The, it caulks, the uh, safety works, it just doesn't pump. So this is a good candidate to be, again, refinished. and and rebuilt. So we'll get in here, we'll reseal it, we'll uh, maybe we can redo the stock on it and it looks like it has some decent grain so that's the future that uh, is in store for this uh, blue streak. So okay this is uh, how I blew two hundred dollars out of my uh, virus stimulus money from the United States government and I'm spreading it around like we're supposed to uh, and I didn't do too bad. You know, these were the main things that I was interested in, are these old uh, pumpers. This is a kind of a throw-in, the Daisy BB gun. And this box of uh, stuff is really a sweetener uh, and just made everything okay. It's a good deal. I'm going to go ahead and do this. So uh, i got to get busy now working these over and getting them back into shape for somebody to shoot. Okay, well, while we're on the subject, uh, I'm not a hoarder. Well, I am a hoarder. I, I'm ashamed of myself, but I really try to be in divest mode. But I, I picked these four guns up from another fella, and his father had died, and and he didn't know what to do with them, so he, he sold me these. And this one's a, you know, the Daisy Powerline 856. It's in good shape, and it pumps up, so nothing wrong with it, just not, not really my my cup of tea, I guess you'd say. Uh, and same with this. This is a Crossman Powermaster 66, and, and it's in good shape. So they got BBs in it, too. And it pumps up, uh, I mean, almost new, except some marks here, and it lost the little cover here. So, but anyway, it, also not my uh, air gun of choice. These two would be closer, and this one here, I already started taking it apart. This is a Crossman 140. It didn't pump up, and so I pulled it apart partially. I thought uh, the stock was spray painted with this kind of funny golden colored paint. So I wanted to get that off, so I stripped it, and I'm going to go ahead and refinish the stock and, and hopefully get this all back together. I don't have a spoon style 140 or 147 or any of them, so um, I didn't really, you know, I wasn't looking for one, but this came along and I thought, well, okay. But really the one that I was after is, uh, you know, I'm a sucker for the Sheridans. And this one came along, this one was made 1977, I think, is what I dated it, uh, based on the serial number. And it's in pretty good shape and it pumps up, so... I just can't hardly pass these by when they when they come up. And this was all on Craigslist, and I just happened to see it. So, um, yes, I'm in divest mode, but they keep coming in the door. Mm -hmm.